Hey, this is Dylan Fry, the real estate guy, here to be your guy for any real estate needs in the Kansas City area. I prefer the Northland, but uh, anywhere in the Kansas City area, we're going to be able to help you out. I'm licensed in the state of Missouri, be able to help you out. But today we are doing one of our weekly interviews with everyone because everyone needs a guy. They need people they can trust. Today we've got Nicholas McNabb. He's going to be talking to us about general contracting, coming in, helping you rehab and do some other things to your home, make sure that they get those repairs done right. Um, we're going to get into that here in just a minute, but before we do, if this is your first time to the channel, make sure you hit that follow button. Also hit that little bell so you'll get future notifications of any of the videos we're doing, any uh, weekly interviews we're doing, or any just tips and neighborhood videos of the area. And that way we can make sure if you're looking at moving to the Northland or moving to the Kansas City area, that we can make sure that we make that a smooth transition for you and get some people in your corner to help you out with that. Now, let's get into it. Today, we're doing one of our interviews, and we've got Nicholas McNabb. I'm going to let him get into it. He's going to talk about how he got into general contracting. Hey, thanks for having me today. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm Nicholas McNabb. I'm with me and the boys, LLC. Uh, we're a family construction company. You know, we, I've been doing this most of my life, working, you know, just working for other people or even just doing stuff around the house, learn most of it from my grandpa, you know, and yeah. just kind of evolve from there. And uh, so, you know, one day we're finally just like... Hey, I'm done working for other people. Let's just do this. We know what we're doing. So, uh, so here we are. This is our third year in business, and uh, yeah, and, no and you guys regrets. have done really well for yourselves as well. Right. We, we we've been a lot busier than we ever expected. You know, our first year we probably did triple what we thought we were going to do. You know, <laughs> just even well, through the winter, it was like, oh, we we better we better prepare for the winter. Prepare for no. Hey, everybody's got work to do, and you know, in the summertime we're outside in the winter time we can do anything in the house for it, you know and it's hard to find general contractors uh, it's surprisingly hard you know i mean it's not hard to find them it's hard to find someone that'll actually respond or you know communicate with you or, yeah and actually show up and do it, the job because exactly. i've i've had so many buyers and sellers and different people we've gotten estimates and then we're like hey yeah go ahead and do this work and then we don't hear from them for three weeks to a month it's insane to me to hear that and i hear it all the time because i'm just well, I mean, even if I can't take a job, I will respectfully let you know. You know what I mean? So Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's and that's one thing that I hit off with you guys really quickly is because I had a job that popped up and I was like, I need this done. <laughs> and even though it was a job, you're like, hey, that's not really normally something we do, but you need it done. Here you go. Right. We get we can make it happen. And you really came through in that situation. So that I think is huge for anybody that's looking to buy in the Kansas City area or in the Northland or anywhere around here that having people that you can trust um, when it comes to construction, uh, uh, because there's a lot of things out there that is, is crazy. Tell me a couple things that you've seen that ha have you guys had to go in and do any like cleanup of other constructors oh, works? Absolutely. You know, um, there's uh, like one of our, it was our first year in, you know, and they're like, Hey, we got somebody else, but they've been here for six months and it was a trim job. It was just doing the baseboards, you know, <laughs> like, oh my God. They, they were there for six months, still didn't get it done, and we went in there for two days, got it done. She's happy as she could be, you know. Like. <laughs> that, and that was my mindset when you said that because I, uh, I flipped a few houses, and um, my dad was always in, in that industry and um, rebuilding stuff and everything. And when you said trim job, I was like, that's like a two-day job. Right, what, yeah, what have they yeah. been doing for six months? <laughs> so it's not, it's not simple by any means, but no. it definitely does not take, you know, you, it, yeah. And it's just, it, it's crazy. And finding people that can work fast and work smart. Because I, I think there's been such an influx of the jobs that are out there for general contractors that you have some out there that don't know what they're doing, too. Right. Um, Absolutely. So talk a little bit about that. What are some things that you guys have had to come in and essentially fix after the fact from people either trying to do it themselves or somebody that's been a bad situation? Yeah. It, it could be... We've, we, we've been in situations where it could be not putting any backer boards on your tiles and next thing you know they got mildew going through the wall and we're having to tear everything out or not digging your fence posts deep enough and now they're leaning after only a year and we're having to come through and extract everything and redig it for them you know it's just spending double the money on something that could have been done right the first time just yeah and I think that is huge being able to do it right the first time is I, anytime you're looking at, hey, we're going to make these repairs, if you do it right the first time, it saves you money. Um, yeah, I'm say, and, and it's just a little bit of research, you know. I mean, even if, even, call me up, I'll, I'll tell you, 
No, well, let's let's do it this way. For you know what I mean. I mean, I'm I'm not. I don't just have to do the work. I can. I can Walk answer your questions it as well. Whatnot. Yeah, as well. exactly. Yeah. I think that I think that's huge is having somebody that can walk you through it like hey this has got to be done this way. Um and and if you can explain it like because that's one area where I've seen a lot of people that um they get a little bit confused they're like why well, why does it need to be done this way? It seems like it would be just the same to do it this way. Yeah. And having that experience of you've walked in and seen somebody have a entire uh, situation where mold and then I, I have an insurance background, uh, I'm a real estate agent now, but I have an insurance background. And if it's manuf or like uh, not manufactured defect, but um, if it's just installation ish, like, Hey, this is on the contractor that put this in, they're not going to pay for it. Oh, wow. And it's like if if that's a situation where they're, they're looking at it now, it at the end of the day, they have the burden of proof, but if you're talking about, oh, well, this this should have had backer board on it, it doesn't, and you just put this on here, and now it's m mildewed through. Now we're looking at the what's the cause of loss, and it's because improper installation. Exactly. That's not going to be a covered yeah. loss, and, and that's and that is that's a crappy situation for anybody. Right. Um, now, what are what are the biggest things that you do when you go in and look at a new job? What things are you looking for? Well, I guess it depends on the type of job I'm, I'm walking into. You know, at most generally, if I'm outside, it's probably going to be a deck or a fence. You know, those are yeah. my. I'm I'm a, I'm a carpenter at heart, carpenter at heart, but I like to do everything. I can do. I'm jack yeah. of all trades. You know, uh, so if I'm outside, then I'm looking. I'm looking straight at your supports. You know, I, I, I'm looking for any sort of wood rot, softness in your flooring. Uh, wiggle in your wi any wiggle I guess is, <laughs> could yeah. be the best descri description but uh, as for inside you know it's it's I think the main thing that you that I'm looking at is your drywall looking at your walls making sure there's no cracks spider web cracks because that's settling in the foundation and that can be a lot bigger of an issue than just patching up the drywall you know yeah so talk to me a little bit you get into a job and you see something like that do you you guys can do a lot of things, mm -hmm. but what happens when you run into a situation where you can't do that? Do you have resources for it? I absolutely do. I got friends everywhere, man. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, I got specialists for for my drywall. They're they're a lot better at than me. I'm a I'm a level three. He's a level five. You know, so yeah. I I, I definitely want to give quality over everything. So if it's gonna be a little bit, I'm gonna get my guy in to come do that. I, you know, I'm, I'm not electric certified. I can put some outlets in, but I can't put a, a breaker box in. But I got a buddy that can, you know. So Yeah, and I think that's that's huge. And being able to say, hey, I, I can't do this, but I do have somebody that's that's able to do this. That's what I do every day. Yeah. <laughs> is I, I've got a guy from it for everything. I'm like, hey, if you need, heck, I, I just found out one of my guys does, he'll, he'll tear down complete houses the other day oh, and, nice. and take them away. So I was like, well, that's an aw that's awesome to have in my pocket if I've got an investor that's buying different properties that need torn down, or whatever, and that's huge. Being that center of influence for anybody that needs work, and they just need somebody to call you, or they just need to call you and get a hold of you, and then say, "Hey, okay, yeah, we can get this fixed." Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, what are what are the most common repairs you see in the in the Kansas City area that? is pretty is pretty normal um just with people owning a house the the most common repair is wood rot you know um if you get a new deck or fencing or any anything exterior wood uh -huh. it's, it's probably best to every fall to come through you know every fall try to come through and treat it at least put a treatment on there because it's amazing how fast these things will start rotting out it and it's pretty easy to do you know it's definitely uh a quick afternoon job, you know? Yeah. And, and not everybody does that. I, I've seen a lot of situations where people don't touch it for three, four, five years. Yeah. And, and at that point it's almost too late to do anything. I mean, you might be able to pressure wash it and bring some of the life back, but you know, once they start bowing and doing all that lean and ugly stuff, they, they, yeah, it's they, a, it's a slippery slope from there. So. Now you're tearing out boards and you're trying to replace this stuff. Exactly. And chances are at that point your posts are unusable. So, or oh, my gosh. <laughs> my gosh. So, um, 
what are what are some things that you would advise people not to do if they're looking to do? And I know a big thing is HDTV. They're everybody's seeing it, and they're like, oh, "I can do this myself." <laughs> um, oh, I can watch a couple YouTube videos, which that's awesome. Sometimes they work, but um, there's some situations where people do the wrong things and it costs them a lot of money. So what are some things that you would say if you're going to try and do it yourself, don't do this? Um, I would probably say if you're, if you're dealing with uh, opening up walls, that's probably something that you want to at least get a, a, a second opinion on, you know, cause you never know which one's a load bearing unless you absolutely know, you know, you pull the wrong wall out or you put a improperly install a header and your whole roof could collapse in, you know? Oh my gosh. Mm. And people don't, People don't think about that every time. Right. And, you know, it's how I've seen them do it on TV. It's easy. Do you know? (laughs) It was easy on that wall, not this one. Yeah. In some walls, it is easy to take them out. Absolutely. You can just take them out completely if it's, you know, just a. (laughs) You take that main one about, uh, uh, it could be as fast as tomorrow or it could be 30 days down the road. Whatever's happened. (laughs) And that's one thing I've always I've always thought is interesting is people are like, ah, this just, this just doesn't look right. And, but there's a reason a lot of times why, like if you're talking about a general contractor or an architect and they're looking at, they're building these houses, a lot of times there's a reason they put that, that, that extra beam in there, right. that support system. And they're like, ah, I don't like this. I'm going to take it out. Yeah. <laughs> that can be a slippery slope itself. I've had a few people actually get a little upset with me explaining to them I could not take this beam out. <laughs> it's a lot more than your <laughs> see here. It's thirty foot stretch here. That one beam's holding it. Like, if we take that out, you're not going to have a house I, anymore. Right, I'm not going to do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and and the crazy thing is that people find a way. They're like, ah, let's let's do this. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure when I left, they found someone that would do it. <laughs> oh man. And, and that comes down to integrity and having having the proper integrity, having the proper knowledge of how am I going to – can I do this? And can I sleep at night doing this? Because you never know when that thing's going to collapse. They could right. be living in there, and, and then all of a sudden it's like everyone in the house <laughs> is gone because cause you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite job that you've been on? That's a tough one. I've had a, I, well, you know, I've had favorite jobs and I've had favorite customers. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, um, I, 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 I would say I've had a few repeat customers that are probably my favorite in both, uh, categories. Both yeah, exactly. Um, I, I worked all the way in Stewartsville. I went there for three different jobs, very big jobs. And I would go back, I'd go back again anytime. They, it was, uh, it was just, so ex- yeah. <laughs> explain to me a little bit about what, if it, if it is a good job that you actually liked, what does that look like if you're going in and it, is it something where it's, I know I, I, talk, I, I know a lot of artists and different people and, and when you're in construction, it's similar as art because you're going in and you're, you're creating something. So like, talk to me about your love for that process a little bit. Like going in and putting your own personal touches on it, making sure that it's done right, and then after it's done, what that what that feeling is? Absolutely, it, yeah. It's anytime I'm working with wood, that's I get that feeling. Anytime it could be anything from just putting a new piece of trim up to uh-huh. building a whole new deck. It's that this this was it before there was nothing here, and then I made this piece. I made this wood turn into this mm-hmm. huge project. You know, I mean, yeah. it's that. Uh, I did a uh, swimming pool deck, correct? And I, and I it was a it was attached to a little ten by ten deck, and I turned it into what, a thirty by twenty deck wrapped around the pool, and it was just like you said, it was art. So it, uh, yeah, I, and, and you see those things, and just the visual that it changes. Mm-hmm. And I encourage anybody that's listening to this go check out their page because you'll see some of the cool thing their Facebook page. You'll see some of the cool things that they're doing, and. Um, I, you're underselling the value of what you guys do because it, it is like you're taking this thing that it, it looks like ah this is this is more of an eyesore, and then you see what you guys have come in and been able to basically re re energize this entire area and make it look like something where people are like ah I want to spend a lot of time out here. Yes. Um, yeah. 
I had a guy on here a little bit earlier this year that he does uh, water features. So he goes out and does backyard water features, uh, koi ponds, different um, attractions to make it just more appealing to sit out in their backyard. And where you're talking about the deck and the pool areas and stuff like that, when you have something that is very appealing to go out and sit on, like, or sit out there and you just enjoy it, it's a great feeling for somebody. Mm-hmm. And like, it also makes you want to be out there more often. Because if you have a really bad, crappy deck, you're like, uh, I don't want to spend all my time out here. I'm just constantly looking at this, and then it's making me mad because I'm like, why haven't we fixed this yes, yet? Exactly. And so situations. So <laughs> what are the top three things that you think somebody could do just to, if, if they're looking at, hey, I'm going to do a remodel of a house, what are the top three things that you would say is, gonna, is going to make that house look more appealing? Top three things, yeah. Floors, walls, and ceilings. You know, a, most generally, I mean, most of the time, if you see carpet in a house, if you're buying a house with carpet, I would suggest tear it out and put in some flooring. It's very easy to do. You can watch some YouTube videos, figure it out. If not, it's I'm. It's a very, it's a pretty lower cost job to have someone else do. Even you know, yeah. For, uh, <coughs> the flooring, paint the walls. You know, patch up any little holes and. If if you got popcorn, scrape them. Scrape it. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That is one of the worst things to walk into is is a house with popcorn because you know that stuff's just going to start falling off. Or all cobwebbed up and everything. (laughs) And it's hard as heck to clean. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know who came up with that. But at, at some point in time, they were like, hey, this is a great idea. And it's like, no. No, it is not. Oh, gosh. It And... Talk to me about that process. So you walk in. What? What is that? A is that a hard process to be able to get that off of the there? popcorn? Yeah. Now it can be. Um, as long as you're soaking it real good, letting that soak get wet, wet. A lot of people try to go in and dry, and that's that's the hardest thing. Is if you get it nice and wet, and you can most generally just scrape it, sh- slide your blade across, and a uh, big sh- oh sorry, taping blade or something. Yeah, it, a big taping blade. It makes it a, a heck of a lot of mm-hmm. easier of a job. And and people don't realize how, that how those things, they're an eyesore, but they're also not a crazy hard fix. Yeah, you know, it's a little time-consuming, sure, the cleanup. If you uh, if you don't plastic your walls off, you're going to be doing a lot of wiping down. But, yeah, it's it's a pretty fairly easy job to do, just time-consuming. That's you know. Yeah, and so th- – that's one thing that I do want to hit on is you, you kind of hit on it right there is prep work. Mm-hmm. Um, when somebody is doing a job, I think that's one of the biggest things that gets left out when people try to do it themselves mm-hmm. or um, they see, Hey, I can, I think I can do this. And then they get into it and they've, they're 50% done with the job. And they're like, Oh my gosh, I just created like four other jobs <laughs> because they didn't take the time to do the prep work. Yeah, now we're scrubbing these paints, got to sand these scratches out. And <laughs> yeah, I'll, of course. Uh, you know, I, I and when I was younger, I was terrible about it. And my grandpa kind of pounded that into my head like, you're going to want to take at least half a day to get ready for this job, you know? <laughs> like, if you got a paint job, you might as well just plastic and tape everything. You don't want to have that issue. Cover all your flooring, you know? If you're on. You're painting the, the this wall. Just cover the floors. It's fine, you know. Yeah, take that extra time. Exactly. I, I'm the same way. I get impatient. Uh, like I, 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 my dad and my uncle do a lot of, um, a lot of construction work for me, and on different houses that we've had, and because they've done it their whole life, it's similar to you, and um, that they, they they're like, oh, you're never here for the job. And I'm like, man, I don't have the patience <laughs> for this. Like, because they'll be like, oh, we got to do this. And I'm like, why don't we just jump to this step? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it, it, like, let's get to the fun stuff. <laughs> and they're like, no, we got to make sure that we're doing it right. We got to, we got to do this. We got to, we got to let these posts set up. And I'm like, oh, man. I'm ready to put the pickets up, though. Come on. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that's the stuff that leads to the, the bad stuff. Yeah. So that, it's funny that you say your grandpa kind of beat that into yeah. you because oh, yeah. now I'm getting to the point to where I'm like, okay, now I can now I can slow down a little bit and do it. Mm-hmm. But uh, my dad has been that same way. He's like, man, just slow down. <laughs> yeah, my my uh, the one I'm still working on is you'll notice if you check out our page on Facebook that me and boys LLC, uh, my before pictures – real bad about taking them because I want to just jump in and start so a lot of them 
I've already torn half of the job out. I'm like, oh, I, I got to take some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my wife gets on me all the time. She's because of different stuff like that where we've um, remodeled houses we've lived in. She's like, did you take any before pictures? And I'm like, <laughs> no. Yep. No, I didn't at all. Uh, like, I completely forgot about that. And she's like, ah, let me grab a couple pictures and that. And the, like you're saying, the walls are already ripped out and stuff. And at that point, you're like, well, what did it actually look like before? <laughs> I'm like, surely you got a picture of this room before. I was say, I've gotten lucky a couple of times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, with that being said, what are... You, when, how do you illustrate that to your customers? So if, if you're going in there and they're like, hey, I, ne- I really need this job done and I need it done tomorrow um, or I need it done in the next two weeks or whatever, and you're like, hey, uh, this is what I need to do before that, how do you how do you get that across to people and how receptive are they of of you taking that extra time to make sure that you're, you're, not, ha- you're not creating any other issues for them? Well, you know, from the beginning, like when I come in to do a bid, when I'm first meeting you and I'm saying, you know, okay, I'll, if we did do this, I would probably need at least this much. And I'm always, I'm real quick to add a few days onto how long that I say that I might need, because you never know what you're going to run into. So if if it takes me a little longer to prep, then that was kind of just put into the, the amount that I'm giving you. And of course, you know, I mean, things happen too. So it's sometimes you just can't beat the weather or something such and, even correct yeah. i mean and if you especially if you're doing outside jobs you got to have fair weather otherwise if it's raining and you can't set posts or do anything like that then you just can't do it yeah it's yeah it's two two rain days on a certain on a fence job can almost put you a week behind you know <laughs> yeah well because now you have other jobs that you're bumping into exactly. and um you gotta you gotta rearrange everybody's schedule to try and do that yeah. and it's difficult. I, I, I think that's one of the hardest things about general contracting is that you ha- are dependent on the weather sometimes or any any trades job. You're dependent on the weather. So now you have to constantly be aware of your entire schedule. Absolutely. Um, so d- talk a little bit about that. What kind of support systems do you guys have um, to make sure that you guys are staying on top of that schedule? So I, I know I, I've uh, just because I've had, had her, I know your wife does a lot of that for you mm-hmm, yeah. and she seems like she is on top of her game. She's definitely, I mean, I, I would be lost without her. She, she runs my entire life basically. <laughs> oh man, that coffee like completely burnt my entire throat. Oh no. <laughs> but yeah, no, she does a, she does a great job. I know she's harassed me a couple times cause we were, ta- when we were talking about doing this, she was like, Hey, I need this on this schedule. And I was like, Oh, crap, my bad. Yeah. I'll get you over the information you need. Because, and I, I think that's an invaluable piece when you have any kind of business is having that person to keep you on track. Absolutely. And, you know, I get so busy. I'm on the job. I'm on every job. For the You know, I mean, for the most part, I'm on every job. Unless, of course, like we were saying earlier, it's a drywall. But I still show up to those jobs. I, you know, I'm not going to let – I don't close it out until it's until I see my eyes on it. But um, <clears throat> so, yeah um, – and why do you, why do you do that? So it, it, it because I think that's a huge piece for people. Why do you want to put your eyes on every single job? Well, you know, I, I it's not that I don't trust my guys because I know that they're going to yeah. do a great job. But you know, um, I just verification. I can't I can't have the homeowner tell me something that I can't can't respond to because I I wasn't there to see it. You know, I mean, I have to. And what if what if he missed something? What are the what are the one percent chance that he might have didn't see this spot over here that needed done? So now I got to go and just make sure, you know. Yeah, and and I think that's a big point of giving quality work and you standing behind your work. Right, absolutely. Uh, and if you're a business owner, I mean, every business owner that's watching this understands what you just stated there <laughs> because they're like, hey, there's so many times you you are talking to people about and you're teaching your team and your employees, hey, this is how we do things. But it doesn't matter how long they've been with you or different stuff like that. There's a sense of pride when you go and look at that that you're like, if something doesn't look perfect, perfect, you're like, eh, mm-hmm. let's fix this. Let, let's go ahead and take care of this. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I really am my own worst critic 
with me when it comes to that. I'll have a beautiful straight fence or a, just a brand new, I'm like, I just finished my railings on my deck or something like that. And I'm sending pictures of my wife. I'm like, something's not right. I don't like it. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I, I would go over I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Just, just tweak something a tiny bit. I'm like, oh, okay, I like it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's hard to, like, <laughs> to it, when you have the eye for it, uh, that's, that is something that is huge. And having the eye for it, not everybody's going to notice that imperfection that you did, but you want to cater to that imperfection mm -hmm. because you're going to have that 1% that is going to come by and they're going to be, sh like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you got a client that you just did a nice deck for, and they're looking. They've got got all their friends over, and everybody's inspecting it, and they're like, "Oh, this is awesome! Oh, this is awesome!" And then you got Gary over here. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, this is a little bit crooked. Yeah. And they're like, and then everybody's like, "Oh man, now, now that you pointed that out, and that's correct." Exactly. And so having that eye for it makes it makes all the difference because now you're able to you're able to give that quality business to your customers and now when they do show that off there's no imperfections that they're going to find exactly uh, i think that's huge i think that's huge so talk to me um a little bit about what are your guys's favorite jobs to get into what is um what are the what are your main pillars of business so uh, it, I know you talked a little bit about its decks and fences outside and then kind of rehab and inside with floors and stuff. But what, a, what what's majority of your jobs that you're looking at? You know, in the summertime, when the when the ground's thawed, then the majority would probably be fencing. You know, uh, privacy. Okay. Well, well, we'll do privacy fencing or even just someone sees a picture of something that they really like. I'm like, oh, I can do that. I can, <laughs> you know, that. Uh, you see those cattle panel frame fencings out fences out there now. Uh huh. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of those ones too. So it's just, I you know, it's fast and they go quick. Or we, yeah, it's a quick Every, job. Yeah, a quick job, and everyone needs them. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's huge. Hey, so you talked about it a little bit about how you got into this, but expand on that. How did that? How did you come when? You're talking about that relationship with your grandpa, and he was really instrumental in getting you into this. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, you know, my grandpa, well, let me just, my, I, my father passed away when I was 11. So oh my grandpa was my male role model. You know, he was my father figure. And uh, he didn't believe in hiring people to get jobs done. He said, we could, we could figure out how to do it. So I was 11 years old. Learn, I learned how to use a table saw at 11. I won't let my 11-year-old touch one now. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, uh, no, yeah, it's, he, I got most of my uh, power tool training came from his garage. It, 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 it's wild to think about that because my dad has very, very similar background. That, um, my grandma taught him a lot of stuff, and then he latched on to a lot of old um, – a lot of older people. I mean, his dad left when he was six, mm -hmm. so he didn't have his similar situation. He was just, uh, different. But having that, those resources, and it, desperate times call for desperate measures. So now you're back. Hey, we can do this ourselves. And then you're teaching. He was teaching you to do that stuff before an age that most people, just like you said, are even letting their kids touch that yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, it's huge and it's crazy how those things breed you into the person that you become because now you know how to do everything. And that's a very ad admirable trait. And when you're talking about value with people, that's something that they can, they can hold on to of, Hey, yeah, we may n not be the cheapest person in the room, which I, I know it from a real estate standpoint, I'm normally not the cheapest real estate agent out there. One, because I know the things that I'm going to bring to the table, the knowledge that I'm going to bring to the table. I've met people that have been doing this for 10 years that I feel like I can bring just as much knowledge or more to the situation of buying or selling a house just because of the experiences I've had from lending, uh, insurance, and now getting into the full picture of the real estate game. And it sounds like you're bringing the same level of knowledge and understanding to your clients just because you've been doing this for so long. And that, that that piece right there, that's the piece that people don't account for when they're like, oh, well, I, I just priced out these materials and I uh, found it online. Oh, yeah. I, I get that a lot. Uh, you know, and I've 
just a small example, you know, someone's like, oh, can you uh, install this door for me? Sure, it'll be this much. And they're like, but the door only costs $800. I'm like, so you want me to do it for $200? Like, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like... I mean, at that point in time, now my now time is worth worth something to you. Yeah, and it has to be worth something to somebody. Exactly. And I guarantee, most of the times when they're like, "Ah, well, I'll just save the money and I'll do it myself," and they order the door, three days in, they're calling somebody mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> because it, it's difficult. I I have a a significant amount of training in different in different rebuilds and doing stuff. I mean, we've remodeled houses and done different stuff, but there's certain things I don't touch Mm -hmm. because I know that I haven't had that, haven't had any kind of practice. It's not going to look good when I'm done with it. So I might as well bring in somebody that's going to make it look good because otherwise it, it, Otherwise, I'm I'm wasting my time here because I'm going to redo it anyway. Or pay someone to do it for it. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. And now I'm all about learning, too. So I've had a couple houses to where I've done some different projects, and um, I did them myself because I wanted to learn how to do it. But then at the end of it, I was like, man, this did not turn out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> Sometimes it does. Yeah. Sometimes it's good. Um, so if – First off, we're about to wrap this up, and I really appreciate you coming on. But um, give me your elevator pitch. Why should somebody use you if they're looking to um, get their next fence to put up or they're looking for a deck remodel right now in the summertime or the, uh, come wintertime they're looking more for some interior stuff? Uh, why should they use me and the boys? I'd say the biggest thing is our communication. We're very communicative, uh, trustworthy, tidy, you know. Uh, we're just... I'm not going, I'm, I, I am not trying to rob anybody. I'm always, I'm always going to give you the most fair price for everybody, both parties involved and, you know, and, and at the end <laughs> of the know. day, if it's not a deal, it's not, I mean, if they yeah, don't take the deal. Exactly right. Maybe you can find someone else to do it. If not, it's all right. You can call me back. I won't be upset. So. And, and I think that's, uh, that's a pretty admirable about you guys is you're like, Hey, this is what we, this is what we would charge to do it. Um, you might be able to do this differently, cheaper, but this is what we would charge, and we're going to do quality work. And that goes a long way. You may miss some deals because somebody's cheap, but at the end of the day, they're cheap. They're normally cheap the whole time. So it's it's hard to – and at the end of it, they're going to want perfection. So you may be saving yourself in the front on that end. But I, I think that is huge. If you want somebody that you can trust that's going to come in and do it, get a hold of me and the boys. Now, with that being said – how do we get a hold of me and the boys? So you can find us on Facebook, uh, where me and the boys LLC, or uh, you can find us on Google, Yelp. I believe that yeah, we're on the Better Business Bureau. You know, we you can even look at us on Home Advisor. We we got a five star review on there, over twenty reviews. So you, can find you guys us are killing it. <laughs> you can find it anywhere. Just look yeah. up me and the boys LLC. You're going to be able to find good people that are going to be um, going to come out, help you do those things, uh, get things completed. Make sure that, whoa, Hmm. that did not sound good. Um, (laughs) Me and the boys, they're going to come out and make sure that they really take care of you guys. Make sure that your job's done right. They're going to communicate with you the whole time, and they're going to give you a heck of a price that you can't beat that knowledge and expertise anywhere else in the market. I think it's going to be huge. Now, I really appreciate everybody coming. Nick, I really appreciate you being on here and talking about what your business is. Uh, if this is your first time on the channel and you really like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, hit that follow button. Hit that little bell so you'll get future notifications of future interviews of people that are going to help you when you move to the Kansas City area or you're moving to the Northland. You're going to have people that can help you, whether it's general contractors, whether it's lenders, whether it's just people... Uh, helping you with water features, helping you grow your business. I've got all kinds of resources here in the Kansas City area, and I want to bring them to everybody that's watching this channel. So make sure that you hit that follow button, hit that little bell, so you'll get those notifications of those videos, and keep a watch out for any of the other people that are coming on. I appreciate everybody.